The fact that you can tell that tale, that it will really think of something special. Now we've got 300 years of Howard's cultivating oysters and selling them to London and then now selling them all around the world and I thought that can't just fade away. But so much of me is just kind of drawn back to the sea and drawn back to that legacy because it's not just dad's business, it's like dad's dad and dad's dad's dad and so forth. You know, there's like all these Howards that have been doing oystering and been living their life, making money and a living and a lifestyle out of the sea. And I thought, well, that can't really just end. That can't just kind of go to waste. have been here for years and years and years. I've done quite a bit on it and luckily because I look after things um, I've kept a lot of the old photographs and that so in my um, research so I worked out that there's been at least uh, well eight generations of Howards on Mersey dealing with oysters. My first memory of oysters basically probably walking out on the mud here picking small ones up well, when we dad from what age I can't remember, but then when I was 13 and you were allowed to work, I used to work with him on Saturdays and holidays. And uh, used to go and, well, most, mostly did what he what he was doing. But he reckoned that in those days we had to haul the dredges by hand. We didn't have winches or anything. And he reckoned that was too much for me. So I used to go ashore and pick these small oysters up for relaying. That's basically what I used to do a lot. I was very, very pleased to follow in his footsteps, you know, despite the fact that he hadn't really wanted me to do it. Um, I was just proud to, you know, to follow what he'd done and then to develop it, meeting the challenges what come, you know, today, really. My first memory of oysters is oyster catching. Um, Dad used to go out to our oyster beds when we were very, very little um, to go and get oysters off our oyster beds. Um, that was the days where Dad used to just like, just have an oar and just punt out there. He was like a machine. Um, so he used to take the boat out there and we used to get in the boat with him and then just go out to the oyster beds and then just walk across the mud picking oysters up when we were very, very, very little. And then after that, I just remember eating lots of oysters when I was little as well. So I would kind of think that we're 50% blood and 50% seawater in our veins, because it's just like being on the sea, being part of the sea has been a massive parts of my childhood, really. The, the number of people involved in it now is a very small proportion of the population to, you know, in Mersey to what they used to be. But, you know, there's been that, those few people kept going, and people who come here, when they've been here a little while, they think, that, yes, there's something special about this place, and the oysters are a big part of that, and they're interested in it. You know, you get asked questions. You see people who have been here a few years, and they know you're with oysters, and they want to know about it. And if they read something in the paper, they come and tell you about it. It becomes only a little bit, but it becomes a little part of their life, you know? So you get encouragement to carry on. I kind of see Dad as this, this kind of. I know we always see our family in, in kind of in hyperbolic ways, but I see him as this kind of legend of of, of this community. He's employed and helped so many people over the years. If it wasn't for Dad, there would be no fishing industry because Dad enabled the fishermen to sell their fish somewhere else, and the oyster industry as well. If it wasn't for Dad, there's lots of people who are in the oyster industry now that wouldn't be if it wasn't for Dad enabling them to do that, whether it's Dad giving them free ground to grow their oysters or um, teaching them how the industry works. So much that Dad has done has enabled so many people to make a living. And I thought, well, that's one hell of a legacy. And I want to kind of honor that, really. It is still a very physical occupation. Um, and you've got to be prepared to work when you need to work because we are governed by the tides um, and in the winter time especially there's not many hours of daylight um, and you need 
they like really to do the job. Um, and also in the winter it can be very cold. So yeah, the conditions are pretty hard at times. It's so enjoyable because it's just very pure as a work. Um, and you suddenly realise how busy life is when you step out of it. And doing oystering, you can step out of it because you could be out on the water and no one can get to you, no one can like harass you for whatever reason. You know, you're just there and, and that's it. An oyster tastes of where it comes from. It's a product of the environment it grows in. And that environment here is, to me, the ideal environment for oysters to grow and to fatten and make a very good oyster to eat. They can be somewhere else and the same thing doesn't happen. It's only in the creeks around Mersey Island here that they do. Oysters out the river, where they may have spawned and settled, they'll grow but they don't fatten. So a lot of the work here is involved in relaying the oysters from the river in the creeks on the land which we own as individuals, like you own the bit of land your house stands on. Um, and that's the way we produce an oyster which is, we think, the best. I think its flavour is unique to this, to, to the world actually. I think there's a reason why the Romans discovered them and then we're shipping them off by the ton. There's a reason why in the 1800s we were selling a hundred ton of oysters a year. And there's a reason why now the industry's stronger than ever. And I think it's because of its flavor, because it's growing in a part of Essex where there's all these marshes and there's all these lovely nutrients in the marshes. And, and I think that that oysters filtering these incredible foods, nutrients, and it's creating something that is truly unique.